What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm very excited to bring you one of my favorite types of Belgian beer, the Belgian Golden Strong Ale. Uh, Golden Strong Ales are actually very prolific in Belgium. They're one of the more common beer styles that's uh, available out there. The pale beers tend to be a little bit more popular than the dark beers, uh, so I did find a lot of blonde, a lot of triple, a lot of Golden Strong Ale out there. I think one of my all-time favorite Golden Strong Ales and the beer that we're almost trying to replicate today is actually Duvel. Duvel is a very well-known Golden Strong Ale from Belgium. It literally translates to devil, which is honestly a very good name for this beer, if you ask me, because they're actually deceptively strong. They're very dangerous beers. They tend to drink uh, very similar to like a five or a six percent almost session beer. However, they have eight, nine, sometimes even 10 percent alcohol by volume. And you don't know unless you look at that bottle and read that percent ABV because it's very deceptive. Now a lot of people actually confuse triple and golden strong ale. They're two distinct styles of beer, although they are very similar. While they're both lightly colored Belgian ales in the eight to 10% ABV range, I think the biggest difference here is in terms of malt complexity. So triples are gonna be a lot maltier, but also they're gonna be fermented with Abbey Ale yeast, whereas a golden strong ale, it's actually fermented with a different kind of yeast. Technically it's just Belgian golden strong ale yeast, uh, but there's a couple different varieties out there you can use. Bottom line is these are slightly different yeasts than the Abbey Ale yeast. These beers are a lot less estery, a lot more phenolic, so you get a lot more of the clove coriander kind of character um, and a little bit of the higher alcohol like bubblegum kind of character than you do with Abbey Ale yeast, which typically has a little bit of banana, has a little bit of sometimes citrus in it. Abbey Ale yeast tends to throw some more complex esters and less phenols, whereas the Golden Strong Ale yeast tends to throw a little bit more phenolic character. It is a little bit of a cleaner fermenting beer too. The other thing is these beers are also going to be very pale. So if you've ever had a glass of Duvel, it is actually extremely pale. If you're going beyond Pilsner malt and sugar for the base, you're straying into the range of a triple. You want to keep it light, you want to keep it simple, and you want to keep it pale as much as possible uh, when it comes to the grain bill. You're relying on almost 20% sugars to give you the full volume of alcohol that you uh, your unsuspecting beer drinkers will experience. These are honestly very fun beers to make and even more fun beers to drink. They're actually really good for summer. This is honestly, in my opinion, one of the easiest Belgian strong beers to make though. Uh, simply because the yeast is really gonna do all the work for you, provided you get the right fermentation conditions. It's a relatively simple grist, it's a relatively simple hopping schedule, and it's honestly not that long of a conditioning time. So all in all, it has a little bit less complexity than some of the more intricate Abbey styles that are a little bit more difficult, I would say, in some aspects of the brewing process. We are still gonna step mash this one, but if you don't wanna step mash, you can hold it at a low temperature of like 147, 148 for about 90 minutes. That should get you all the conversion you need to keep this nice and dry. One of the most important aspects of this beer is it needs to be extremely dry finishing. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the final gravity needs to be extremely low, like Saison low. It just needs to feel very dry at the finish. That helps accentuate that high carbonation. It helps accentuate the spicy phenols of the yeast and it really does make a huge difference in how this beer is perceived. It's just important to have that light body, trust me. And the best way to get that is through a step mash or through a single temperature rest that targets a high level of uh, fermentable sugar creation. Before we get into the recipe though, I just want to give a couple thank yous and shout outs to some particular organizations that are helping support my channel. The first is Northern Brewer. They provide all the ingredients for all my batches of beer. They're a great place to go get ingredients. They're no longer owned by AB InBev, so make sure you check them out if you're in the market for some ingredients. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply. They manufacture the system that I've been brewing on for the last year and a half now, um, and they have both 120 volt and 240 volt options for your electric brew house. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's dive into the recipe. Again, like I said, very, very simple grist here. We're gonna be starting out with 12 pounds of Pilsner malt, Belgian Pilsner malt. You can use German Pilsner malt if you want, but Belgian Pilsner malt gives you that kind of authentic character that you want out of a Belgian beer. Um, in my case, I'm using franco Belges Pilsner malt. Dingemann's is also a very good option. And then on top of that, we're adding two pounds of clear candy syrup. This is Simplicity candy syrup. Now you can use any sort of white simple sugar in this step. You could sub in pound for pound cane sugar if you wanted to or dextrose, but the candy syrup is my preferred method simply because it's just so easy to dissolve into the boils. It pretty much dissolves instantaneously. It really reduces the risk of scorching. And supposedly the candy sugars have some sort of subtle flavor differences. I've never experienced that with the low color ones, but uh, the higher color ones you certainly 
should definitely look into candy syrups for. However, that's not the case here. If you want to sub in pound for pound white sugar, you're good to go with that. That candy syrup is going to be added about 10 minutes from the end of the boil, just to make sure we have a little bit of time to let everything really fully incorporate into the wort. For the hop schedule on this one, we're going to amp up the IBUs quite a bit. We're going to make this a lot hoppier than you might expect the Belgian ale to be. Uh, Golden Strongs are notoriously a little bit more hoppy than their Abbey counterparts, and definitely a lot more hoppy than a typical Belgian blonde ale. So to bitter, we're going to start out with about a third of an ounce of Magnum. That gets us actually about 30 something IBUs. Um, I have particularly strong Magnum this time. It's 14.4% alpha acid. Um, so that's why I'm using so little of it. However, just you know, make sure you're doing that alpha acid calculation on your own. If you're using your own hops uh, to make sure you get the right level of bitterness. In 20 minutes from the end of the boil, we're gonna add two ounces of straight up German Hallertau. Hallertau is a super floral hop that has an amazing character that really I think it made my triple what it is. Um, and so I'm happy to use it again here in the Golden Strong. And then at zero minutes, we're gonna add the classic Belgian hop, two ounces of Styrian Goldings. Styrian Goldings at the end of the boil gives the beer a really cool little kiss of Belgian character. It has an interesting herbal spice character to it that is kind of reminiscent of coriander and blends very, very well with the phenolics that you would get out of Belgian yeasts. Our yeast is going to be none other than Y yeast 1388 Belgian Golden Strong Ale. This is the Duvel strain, so we are kind of on message with that beer. Um, I'm gonna be pitching a relatively high amount of cells for this one, about 1 million cells per milliliter per degree Play-Doh. About 450 billion cells of yeast going into this 1070 to 1075 gravity wort. I put two smack packs of Y yeast 1388 into a two liter starter with a gravity of 1040. I let that go on a stir plate for about a week and calculators say that that gives me that required cell count. Now I'm pitching such a high volume of yeast simply because I really want this to be a fast fermentation and I want it to get as dry as possible. That's my real goal here. Um, so sometimes if you underpitch the yeast, it can kind of stall out on you a little bit and you might have to use some more advanced methods in order to continue your fermentation along to the final gravity. So for the mash on this one, I'm gonna be using the same step mash profile I've been using for all of my Belgian beers. It has a great way of making it nice and dry, but still giving it a light body and a good level of head retention. Uh, so that mash schedule is about 45 minutes at 148 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by a ramp up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. And then finishing that off with a mash out at 170 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes before we head to the boil. And for the water chemistry on this one, it's also gonna be the same as my other Belgian beers here. Um, I'm gonna put that up on screen now. I don't have my recipe book out here with me. I just don't wanna go all the way down to the basement and get the book, um, but it is on screen here. It's the same exact water profile as my other Belgian beers. It's relatively neutral, to be honest. Um, it's not too high in minerals and it's produced some very clean tasting Belgian beer so far. I have no doubt that it's gonna do the same thing for this Golden Strong Ale. And as usual for the Belgian beers, I'm gonna be starting out with eight gallons of spring water, adding that into my claw hammer supply system. And then I will be adding two grams of gypsum, two grams of Epsom, five grams of calcium chloride, and two grams of baking soda to that mash water. And that gets me that target water profile. Um, I probably will have to do a pH adjustment for this particular beer simply because it is so pale, um, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I added eight gallons of spring water to my claw hammer supply system, and I started to heat that up to mash temperature of 148. I measured out all of my water salts at this time, and I also added those to the strike water, and I milled my grain while it was heating up. Once the water reached the mash in temperature, I mashed in with the grain bill, just being sure to break up all the clumps I had because my mill was not set correctly and crushed a little too fine. I let the mash sit at 148 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, but 10 minutes in, I took a pH reading and I actually saw a fairly high pH of uh, 5.95, so I added some lactic acid to correct for that, brought it back down to a much more reasonable pH. Once the mash sat at 148 Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, I stepped it up to the next step of 158 Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. 
Once that was complete, I raised to the mash out step of 170 Fahrenheit and let it rest there for about 15 minutes. Then I pulled out the grain basket and let that drain for another 15 minutes. As the grain basket was draining, I set the controller to 100% power to get as much uh, of a jump start on the boil as possible. Using my Anton Par Easy Dance, I saw a pre-boil gravity of about 1049. Once I reached the boil, I added my bittering addition of one third ounce of Magnum. I let the boil continue for another 40 minutes, and then 20 minutes from the end, I added my 20 minute hop addition, which was two ounces of Hallertau. Once 10 more minutes had elapsed, I added some yeast nutrient and a Whirlflock tablet. At this time, I also added the two pounds of candy syrup, just being sure to stir it thoroughly and dissolve it fully. 10 minutes later, I added my zero minute hop addition, which was two ounces of Styrian Goldings. I killed the boil by starting to recirculate boiling wort through the chiller and the pump. After being sure the inside of the chiller and the pump are all sterilized, I began to chill down to 70 Fahrenheit, and I took an OG sample using the Easy Dance again, and I saw an original gravity of 1066. That was a little bit below the target, however, I still expected it to ferment out very dry and produce roughly 8% beer. I aerated by splashing into my Spike CF5 this time, and then I pitched my yeast and I left it to ferment. So for the fermentation on this beer, once again, this is a Belgian ale. They're basically made in the fermentation. This is the most critical aspect of the entire brewing process. One of the best things about Belgian ales, though, is that the yeast really likes to get nice and hot. It really does do its own heating for itself. So one of the things that Belgian brewers traditionally do is they let the yeast naturally warm up the fermenter and go to a certain peak level. Um, so the hotter the yeast gets, the faster it ferments, the more heat it produces. It kind of is a, a cycle. However, the hotter it gets, the more fusel alcohols it will create, the more esters it will eventually create as those fusel alcohols get broken down. So there's usually a certain point, depending on yeast strain, where you want to cap the fermentation temperature at its highest level. So for the case of Duvel, they pitch it cold and they let it free rise up to about 82 degrees and they don't let it go any higher than that. Um, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to let it free rise up to however hot it wants to get, uh, but not exceeding 82 degrees. And then uh, once that, that kind of high peak of fermentation temperature gets reached, it'll start to naturally slowly cool off over time as the fermentation activity decreases until it's completely finished. Now, if it is not attenuating fully, I'm going to probably want to take some extra measures by either rousing the yeast and getting it back up into suspension, or by just keeping that temperature at an elevated level for a little bit longer just to be really sure that the yeast is going to continue working. I don't think the Golden Strong Ale yeast is as notorious as Trappist strains for stalling. I would still take care not to crash the beer too early um, or do any sort of strong temperature drops. Like I said, I'm going to be using YA's 1388 Golden Strong Ale. If you use White Labs, that's WLP 570. So like I also said at the beginning of the video though, there's another strain from Belgium you can use to get phenomenal Golden Strong Ales, and that is the Achouf strain, or the Ardennes strain. If you've ever had La Chouf, that's a pretty famous beer from Belgium, um, this is their yeast. The Ardennes strain is available as YA's 3522, and also as Imperial Gnome. If you want to use dry yeast, you really your only option is either Fermentus T58 or Lalamand Abbey Ale yeast. Um, and both of those are actually an Abbey strain, so they're going to be fruitier and they're going to be a lot more estery than a traditional Golden Strong Ale strain. So there will be some differences if you want to use the dry yeast. There's nothing wrong with using the Abbey strain for this anyway. You're just going to have different fermentation character. Just be prepared for that. As always with these Belgian beers, please don't ferment them under pressure. They will thank you. And please don't substitute a Gewijk strain in for it. So in a nutshell, I'm going to be pitching about 450 billion cells of yeast into the wort. Uh, at about 65 degrees, letting it free rise naturally up to about 82 degrees, and then letting it just ride out from there, uh, keeping it warm if I need to, monitoring that gravity, making sure it gets all the way down to uh, a very low level, about 1010 or less would be ideal, um, and making sure that it tastes good along the whole way. So hopefully this fermentation actually goes really fast and finishes up in about a week. Uh, once it gets to about that point, I will probably just go ahead, throw this into some bottles, uh, and then put the rest into a keg and uh, see what happens. So I'll catch you guys then. So the fermentation on the beer went pretty well overall. It actually was relatively quick in terms of fermentation. It went down to about 
uh, 11 or 12 days, I think, total fermentation time. Uh, a absolutely awesome 90% attenuation with a final gravity of 1006. That actually gave us a 8.0% ABV. That is right on style for this beer. It ended up actually not being super drinkable right away as it was young. It really started to come into its own after about two or three weeks though. Um, and at that point, tasting very, very good. And the bottle condition portion of this beer was even better. So the appearance of the beer, it's actually a really nice light golden color. Um, not clear, it's got a little bit of haze to it, but you can see a really, really nice, well built up, very white tight bubble head on it. Um, sticks around for a long time, leaves some good lacing, just your standard Belgian stuff right there. So now let's go in for aroma. This is a very highly aromatic beer actually. So I'm getting like a really nice kind of spiciness character to this, like um, mostly coriander, mostly coriander, but a little bit of something different. There's also, there's a little bit of an earthiness in there, earthy hoppiness um, that's coming through. Combine that with a sweet malt character, it definitely smells very Belgian-y. It smells exactly like you would expect it to. It smells like that nice kind of peppery, spicy character with a little bit of earthy hops behind it and a little bit of sweet malt, but nothing too much. So now let's go in for the mouthfeel. Wow. Yeah, so almost like a Saison, but not quite. Very, very dry, first of all. So there's not all that much uh, texture to it, but you do get a really, really huge amount of carbonation, that spritziness in the tongue. This is carbonated bottle condition to about three and a half volumes of CO2, which makes for a really, really spritzy beer. It, there is still a little bit of mouthfeel to it though. It's not just as super dry as a Saison where there's almost nothing there. It doesn't last for too long, very dry, goes right off the tongue, but um, very pleasant, very easy beer to drink, especially in the hot weather. So now, going for flavor. Mm. Yeah, so this is significantly better than the other Belgian Golden Strong Ale I did last year or two years ago. There's no kidding, leaps and bounds way better than last time. It's much more akin to the character of a Golden Strong Ale. Um, the one I made a few years back was more like a light bodied triple kind of. The biggest variable that I changed was the yeast. Last time I used Abbey Ale yeast, and this time I used a dedicated Golden Strong Ale yeast, and that makes a big difference in a Belgian beer. This is a good balance of esters and phenols, but it's definitely very dry. And so it definitely hits more of the phenols on this. It's got a nice peppery character. It's got a nice spice to it, uh, a little bit of that coriander. Same thing with the aroma. It's got that really good dry, earthy hop flavor um, that's coming through in just a very nice way. But above anything else, there is a great, crisp, clean, outstanding malt flavor in this. And it's not obscured by the esters, and it's not blown out by the hops. Um, there's a little bit of a nice kind of semi-fruity hop flavor there. Doesn't last for too long, a little bit up front, and then it goes away. But the resounding, the, le the thing that stays on your tongue, the thing you taste the most of the flavor, is this crackery honey malt flavor that, again, franco Belgians, man. It's just, this is, it's an awesome malt. As I sit here in the sun a bit longer, this does start to get a bit light struck. It is a little bit of a sacrifice that I make for having good lighting in my videos, but I want to show off the color of this beer because it is really a very, very pale beer. 
Um, I know this is a very thick glass, it's a very full glass, but when you have a little bit less room for the light to go through, it does actually turn out to be very pale. As far as being close to Duvel, I don't think it's quite exactly the same thing. Um, it's not as spicy as Duvel. It's not as perfumey, I think, as Duvel is. A little bit of bubble gum in there usually you get. Um, this is different, not as, not as expressive, but it's still very good, and it's still very much a delicious Golden Strong Ale. So one important detail here is that I definitely let this one age for a bit. So um, it is a, it's not as strong as the triple. It's not as uh, complex of a flavor as the triple was. So it didn't need a ton of aging, but this is about three weeks old at this point. It's been sitting in the cold cellar at about 50 degrees, uh, and it's effectively lagered out by now. And, and that makes a big difference, I think, in how clean that malt flavor is and how uh, how clean that yeast is, right? So now what I've done is I've shaken up the bottom of the bottle and I've poured the rest of it in, and as you can see, it's a lot hazier, it's a lot darker. So I wanna see what this changes about the flavor. Right off the bat, there's a little bit more yeast sharpness. That kind of gets rid of that clean malt flavor, unfortunately, but you get a little bit more of the yeastiness, a little bit of berry in there, um, tiny bit of bubble gum, but above anything, it's really just more of like a, an estery character. No banana, there's no isolamyl acetate in here, so that's actually all right. The overall fermentation characteristic of it is distinctly Belgian, rather clean for a Belgian, but still very good. Um, I'm very happy I was able to hit that 8% mark off of a 1065 OG too. 90% attenuation is no joke. But overall, this is a very good example of a Belgian Golden Strong Ale. Again, a lot of the beers that I've been making over the last several weeks have been in anticipation of the wedding week. We had a lot of parties over at the house. All of the beer is gone, with the exception of a few bottles that I squirreled away for safekeeping, which was, this was one of them. Um, and I'm super happy. I guess drank through 20 gallons of my beer in three days, and they loved every single bit. So of the Belgian beers, the triple was everyone's favorite, um, also my favorite. You didn't last very long, but the Golden Strong Ale was the second favorite of the whole bunch. Um, and that was honestly, a lot of people really preferred that one to the triple. It's a little less intensity of flavor. It's got kind of just that nice all around sessionable feel to it, even though it's 8%. Um, so I consider that a good success. So regarding potential improvements, the beer is very good. I think if anything, the best two decisions I made were choosing the highest quality Pilsner mold I could find, which was the Franco Belges, and adding in that dedicated Duvel yeast, the Golden Strong Ale yeast. I would be very interested to see what would happen if I fermented this with 3522, the Ardennes strain, or Imperial Gnome, the uh, Le Chouf yeast, because that would be a very different character entirely, but still probably a very good one. Um, and it's definitely a good beer style to experiment around with those types of things. There's a few things I would change about it though. I'm not 100% happy with it. It is a very good beer, but there's just one thing I would, I would switch up a little bit, and that is adding actually less late boil hops. I think the 10 minute addition was unnecessary. There is a little bit of fruitiness in there that is, um, it's fine. With the style, it's fine. It's, it's supposed to be a little bit fruity. Um, I don't personally like it. I like a spicier Belgian uh, Golden Strong, so I think I would just personally nix that for my own tastes and maybe just dump that into either the zero or just omit it entirely. And the second thing is I would actually add a little bit more bitterness. Um, it's a multi beer. It's 8%. It does kind of overwhelm the bitterness a little bit. And I know the IBUs do indicate that it's a little bit more bitter than your typical Belgian beer, but I would have simply increased that bittering addition by maybe another 10 IBUs just in order to get a good snappy bitterness that's gonna really accentuate the spicy character of this beer. Um, and yeah, omit that 10 minute addition, I think that's gonna be fine. That being said, I would not change a single thing about the hop varietals, um, and I would not change a single thing about the malt character, the yeast fermentation characteristics, any of that. Um, just the hops. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed this beer. Um, and if you don't mind, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well, and please comment down below with your thoughts. All of these things cost you nothing and they really help me out quite a bit, and I absolutely love to talk with all of you about your thoughts on things. Nothing beats the community feel of this hobby, and that is also extended to YouTube as well. So if you got a question, if you got a comment, drop it in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. And if you do want to support the channel, find 
financially, an easy way to do so is to hit that super thanks button. It's a huge way to say thank you. Your comment stands out from everybody else and it means a ton to me. If you want to support the channel, there's a number of great ways to do so. The one I would personally recommend is picking up a t-shirt. I have this t-shirt as well as many others in the t-shirt store. You'll find that down below the description box. There's a banner with different t-shirts on there. Click on that, you'll get to the site. You'll see what I have to offer. I get about 30% of the sticker price off of those t-shirts and uh, it's a great way to help support me. You get something out of that. Also, I have a Patreon. My Patreon supporters are really helping out a ton. They are the ones that are driving the production behind this channel. You guys are the people who allow me to upgrade my filming gear, my lighting gear, my editing software right now. That's the most recent thing you guys have really helped out a lot with, working on DaVinci Resolve Studio. Thank you for that one. So that's gonna be in the description box if you wanna check that out for more. I also have an Amazon store, which is also available in the description box. That's where you can find all the equipment that I use that's available on Amazon and that I personally recommend. If it's there and I've used it and I like it, it's on that store. I also have channel memberships, a couple bucks a month. Uh, you get a couple perks in there that help you stand out from your fellow commenters down below in the comments. Check that out for some more interesting things. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also available on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer, where I will post slightly more frequent content updates, and uh, yeah, check it out, you might be interested. Anyway guys, if you're still watching and you're actually here at the end of the video, thank you so much for sticking around. I know my videos can get kind of long, but you guys are the real MVPs here, so this one goes out to you guys. So, till the next one, cheers.